So, hello everyone, good afternoon. Uh, as Jeff says, my name is Simon Goodwill. I think I know most of the people uh, in here. Um, and I'm going to give you a, a short ish introduction to the work we do up at um, Sports Engineering Research Centre. Uh, so, a quick overview of the group. Um, and actually, before I start the text, when I was putting this presentation together, I was actually trying to find a picture in all our massive uh, image catalog of the things we do, trying to I'm uh, trying to find one image that encapsulated everything we do in sports engineering. And to be honest, I, I sort of failed. Because there's basically so many different things, so many areas that we work in. Um, that is fact in terms of teaching, uh, research, consultancy. But I did pull this one up because it kind of, it kind of sums up a typical project. Um, I'll talk more about specifics of projects in a minute. But we've got, I think it's Simon on the bike. Mm -hmm. looks like Simon who's twin brother. Um, with a Connect 3D... Uh, 3D depth camera here, camera looking at Simon as a cyclist, looking at the cross-sectional area as a, as a profile, and also looking at the actual sort of cross-sectional area here. Just as a, a typical example of the kind of project we work on, we work, do a lot of work with British Cycling, uh, and in this, kind of, uh, not really uh, revolutionary, but looking at trying to minimise cross-sectional area. If you like a cheap replacement to a very expensive wind tunnel, uh, where you could also do that experiment. So down the, down the right hand side, we are, you know, we're very proud of it, we are the world's largest academic uh, research centre involved in sports engineering. We've got 19 research staff, tw 23 PhD students. That number is slightly inflated that we've got four new ones about to start, so I've included those in there as well. And then currently uh, 80 master's students uh, on our MSc course, which I'll talk a little bit about in a moment. Um, it says the internationally renowned Centre of Excellence for Research, Consultancy and Education. I'm going to talk about each of those uh, individually. We've got really long-standing partnerships with both commercial and non-commercial uh, partners. An example of a long-term one, I first started my PhD back in 1996, working with the International Tennis Federation, and they remain to be one of our research partners 20-odd uh, years later, 23 years later. Um, and I put that last line uh, partly as an um, uh, acknowledgement to, to Steve Hake in terms of establishing the research group back in 1996. But what dawned on me when I was uh, putting this together was we, were, we established in 1996 up at the University of Sheffield and we moved down here about 13 years ago in 2006. And the reason for moving was actually sort of one of the underlying principles of integration. We moved down here to collaborate with sport and to be in a department of sport or an academy of sport, whatever you wanted to call it back there, and to be involved in uh, researches in sports science. You know, we moved from a uh, department of engineering, but we wanted, you know, we, we felt that the best thing for the group was to collaborate with sport and exercise scientists all those many years ago, and nothing's essentially changed uh, since then. So, it's history. Mentioned about the staff, so we've got 19 research staff. There's a couple in there that you could flag up as uh, AWRC, so the Advanced World Dream Research Centre, that I'll talk very briefly about later. Um, of the 19 staff, the thing that I want to point out is nine of those, probably quite a few familiar faces there, nine of those are heavily involved already with teaching. So in terms of a research centre that's involved in teaching, you know, we, all, we already are. Um, and we've got researchers from all a whole range of backgrounds. We've got um, pick out Chris Hudson there, programming background, we've got John Kelly, mathematics background, a number of us with mechanical engineering background, uh, Ben Heller with electronics and uh, medical physics as a background. Better crack on because I've just realised I've got quite a few to get through. Uh, lots of PhD students, 23, sometimes lose count. A lot of part time students, but also a lot of full time students, with four silhouettes being the new students. And very importantly, we've got our research support in Amanda and Carol. That's where we are now, of course, with the new, in terms of integration, we'll have a whole research support team that Amanda and Carol will be part of. Um, I'm going to start off with teaching, because, um, you know, it's, uh, it, is a, it is an important part of this as a, as a research centre. We've got the MSc in Sports Engineering, we've also got the, uh, the BSc in Sport and Exercise Technology. A few images of our students and the kind of things that they get up to. The thing that I want to pull out here is, though, in terms of the challenges faced by combining you know, research and teaching, you know, we're already we're already aware of those. You know, it's not like not blinkered in terms of just doing research. 
So in terms of uh, predominantly teaching staff being involved in the group, you know, we, we're familiar with the challenges that that poses. Also familiar with the benefits you know, in terms of uh, how our research brings the, brings the teaching to life, you know, brings the, the course to life for the students, whether that be in the lectures or in the research projects that um, the, 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 the teaching, sorry, the, the members of research staff get involved in. Um, on to now the research that we do as a group. Um, put here, we develop you know, new, new knowledge that improves the understanding of a complex sport environment. We have three core research themes or groups within the centre. So we've got them here as design engineering, biomechanics and applied computing. Got them down there, so typical projects with design engineering with the, with the golf ball and the uh, golf club design. Biomechanics. I'll, I'll talk about each one individually. Uh, actually, we've got applied computing here. An example of um, it's from Marcus Marcus's PhD work, sponsored by the International Tennis Federation, looking at uh, player tracking from a single view camera. Uh, design engineering. So this is one of our research theme groups. Um, top left. I don't think it can be a, a Caesar presentation without an, an image uh, of a CFD flow. Uh, so that's a computer simulation of a cyclist. Um, on the left hand side, in fact both of these are Bodil's uh, PhD, so we've got kind of like the traditional sports engineering looking at impact works, you know, in terms of uh, looking at material properties, uh, and on the left hand side, an uh, application of looking at material properties, we've got a dummy there that's censored up, and this is a project looking at the studs, the stud interaction, and how studs can lead to lacerations. Studs. So, <laughs> right, right on cue. Uh, if, he's, if he says so, uh, move on from that one. Um, another one of our research theme groups: uh, biomechanics. Biomechanics. It's kind of uh, what I'm going to talk about. Probably doesn't sound like classic biomechanics, but what one thing I particularly picked on here is our um, body morphology research. So we've got scanning systems up in, in the laboratories, both ends of the spectrum. So in terms of scanning systems, you know, scanning the body, uh, we've got the, the high-end gold standard systems that we can then use to validate our own low-cost systems, such as uh, the Connect-based system. And then an application of that, up in the top left-hand corner, um, we're looking at body segment volumes. So we do work with British Cycling that I mentioned and a project that we've got with them, so they've got one of our, uh, one of our scanners in their laboratory, um, and they can be looking at, say, an SNC intervention, where they'll capture the, body, uh, the thigh volume before an SNC intervention, then obviously conduct the intervention, and then the measure the uh, body segment volume afterwards, looking at um, any increases, uh, looking at body shape, this one down the left-hand side, and then one on the right hand side, looking at more our health, how our health projects so were um, involved in this support for all bra project, looking at how a bra can be designed and developed to place the breast in a more repeatable position for radiotherapy. Another application of the, the kind of work we do. Just going to race on a little bit now. Uh, applied computing being the third, uh, the third research, uh, third research theme. A lot of the work here is with our Olympic sports. So on the top left, we've got an image of Adam Peaty looking at one of our systems. This is down in Loughborough, down the Loughborough pool. We've got a number of underwater cameras. You can see just dropped in here. We've got an instrumented uh, starting block here with a, with a four spectre. So all the normal uh, laboratory equipment out in the field. And then Adam with his uh, support staff looking at, sorry, Adam Peaty, 50 metre, Adam 100 metre, sport champion, uh, in breaststroke. And he's commented uh, in public about how systems like ours improve his performance. I'm going to have to just race to that. Oh, in fact, I'm, I'm nearly there in terms of... On to opportunities. Um, the obvious ones in terms of the research work we do, you know, for placement students. We already had one last week, last year. It was fantastic. Came from a um, smart and exercise science course, Steph. We've had him, you know, he come in... We, he's been exposed to working with British Rowing, so he gets out to go into Caversham, onto the site to see, um, to see you know, Olympic, Olympic sport in action. And I really do think he's gained massively in terms of uh, complementing his course. 
final year project students. The reason I raise this is that we have students obviously from the MSc course, but we could take, MSc, we could take students from all the different courses uh, and they'd really benefit from you know, working in our research centre and our research group. Put jointly supervised uh, as in, which is only really one supervisor, but we'd, we'd support that. Um, involvement, obviously we've got existing partnerships, existing research partnerships. Um, love it. If, there's loads of opportunities there. The reason I pull that out is there, that's, that's funding, that's guaranteed funding that we've got with ITF, EIS. So if somebody's got a project that we could um, use their assistance on, uh, there's, there's the funding there already, papers, obviously I'm just going to skip through these. All the obvious ones, picking out some of the RSA objectives such as innovative teaching methods, media contributions. I think I'm out of time. Right, well, I'm going to talk about the Physical Activity, Wellness and Public Health Research Group. So it's a little bit different because it's kind of new. Um, and I've been interim lead of the group for about two weeks now, probably. And so there's a little bit of history I'm going to talk about, but also some of the projects we're currently doing. And in the future, we'll be able to talk a little bit more about where we're going to go with it. So this is kind of taken from an old Centre for Sport and Exercise Science slide, really. So our slogan used to be from public health to national pride. So we used to work across the spectrum from elite sport right through to clinical populations. Um, we opened in 1999. Uh, I haven't quite been here that long. Um, we've got roughly a 1.2 million turnover per annum. Um, I haven't got the staff numbers on there because we're not 100% sure who's in the group yet. Um, we've generally been profitable. Uh, work obviously out at Collegiate Hall. And we have three themes, so the sports performance, science, physical activity and health, and wellness. And that's now split, which I'll show you in the, in the next slide. Um, we've always had quite high numbers return to REF, and I think that's gone up even more now. I haven't had a chance to get the latest numbers in terms of what's likely to be submitted into current REF. So the old Centre Sport and Exercise Science, say we have three themes. So Joe's going to talk to you about the sports performance side of things that she's leading up and the physical activity, well-being, public health side, the physical activity for health and wellness has kind of remained pretty similar at the moment. As I say, we might review these things once we get a chance to meet as a team. Um, but at the moment we cover prevention and disease management and obviously wellness in terms of corporate wellness, both internally through the SHU Wellness Programme and our external work as well. And that sort of thing covers evaluations, community projects, clinical trials, uh, project design, all sorts of things. So this just gives you a flavour of some of the sort of current and recent uh, clients that we have within the team. So at the top there, I don't know if I've got, have I got a pointer? No, maybe not. At the top there, top corner, you've got the charity work that we do, links with cardiovascular disease, cancer, and MS, which are the main sort of areas that we work in. You've also got all the work that we do with councils and the NHS stuff that we do, and various other projects down here, so AstraZeneca, Innovate UK, Sport England, these are all current projects, Greater Manchester Moving, etc. We're also closely linked to National Centre for Sport and Exercise Medicine, and they're likely to be, play a big part in the Advanced Wellbeing Research Centre as well, which I think offers great opportunities as a group also. So just going over some of the projects that we're currently doing, just to give you a flavour of the sort of work that we're involved with. I've tried to pick a, a more evaluation-y, community-type project, a more clinical project, and talk a little bit about the workplace wellness stuff as well. But these are just examples. There's a lot of other ones that I could have put on here. So the Active Lives Children and People, I probably should get Tim to stand up and talk about this one, so if I get anything wrong you can tell me. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, obviously what it is, is a national statistics report reported annually about children and young people's physical activity. And our role in it has been to validate the survey against objective measures and develop algorithms that power the calculations of physical activity. I got that right, Tim. This has led on to other work with Sport England. So the secondary teacher training stuff that, that Tim's been doing. Um, we're looking at a pilot and a rollout project to evaluate the process and outcomes associated 
with their investment in secondary PE. Um, and that's around improving extension on people with a positive attitude towards sport and being physically active. That's going to be running over the next, is it the next three years? Yeah. Keep going backwards. I'm not going to talk about that one, sorry. <laughs> I've not got time to talk about all of them. Um, and then workplace wellness, which obviously is something that I've been involved with a lot in the past. Internally, I'm sure you're all aware of the She Wellness Program that we run through the group. Um, it's been a program that's running since 2005, so we've seen it's well over 10,000 staff sessions that we've run since then. We've got a huge database from a research perspective of data on um, clinical measures that we've taken in those sessions and that we're starting to publish now. Um, but also that has led to a lot of external work. So because of the evidence that we've gathered through our internal programme, we've been able to get funding to do the work externally through the NHS. A large project has been the Academic Health Science Network project where we piloted it across three different NHS trusts in Yorkshire and Humber. Um, but we also developed a training practitioner programme through them as well to train their practitioners to deliver the service that we do. Um, the latest project has been the Innovate UK funded one, which I don't think it's quite been announced yet, um, where we're looking at tweaking that programme for the SME market, so for the manufacturing sector. Uh, so small organisations, less than 50 people across um, the Sheffield City region. It's a proof of concept project at the moment, but it's looking at seeing if we can develop a more cost effective method because an hour session which we do in She Wellness is is too costly for that market so we're looking if a 30 minute version of it can actually still make a difference and get the benefits that we get from the program that we currently run. Another slide, this is just to give a feel for some of the clinical work we do. So this is mainly Simon's work um, on cardiovascular rehabilitation and some of the uh, recent projects he's got in through AstraZeneca, so optimising secondary prevention quality of life following earlier cardiac rehab. Um, and the NHR project, which is a feasibility study of early outpatient review and early cardiac rehab after coronary artery bypass grafting. And then there's some other examples of some of the ongoing work in that area. So as I say, this is just giving you a feel for it. There are other areas that we work in from a clinical perspective. I think you're all aware that we do a lot of work in cancer and also in multiple sclerosis as well. So in terms of student experience, like Simon was saying earlier, these are things we all currently do, so it's just making sure that we make the most of what we do and also that we enhance it where possible as well. So we currently have got intern opportunities for students within some of the projects that we run. Uh, we offer dissertation supervision, work experience, SHU wellness. Most of our deliverers have come through programmes at SHU. Um, and we also train up our casual staff are either master students or PhD students at student SHU that deliver the SHU wellness programme. And we also see most of our staff get involved in delivering guest lectures as well within the department. But as I say, that's something that I think we can expand on and make the most of in the future. I just wanted to remind everyone when our, our first team meeting is. Um, we hope to meet as a group every two to three weeks. Following that, we're going to altern alternate the day, so it's going to be, I think that one's a Wednesday, and we're going to alternate it with a Monday, because we have some part-time staff, so we're going to try and make sure that as many people can make at least every other one of those as possible. Um, <laughs> right, so, um, third, I'm really glad to say I'm not following Simon on this one like I was at the last time we did this. Um, so, um, this is, as a new school was explaining earlier, this is the other half of, um, I suppose, the old CSS. Um, and I'm not even going to say the other half, really. It's sort of a piece of, um, it was a lot focused on consultancy and delivery. Um, now it's really exciting that we're part of being uh, tasked with becoming um, a research group. So, uh, and sort of bringing those together. So. Um, so that, that, that's really nice um, for us to be going. So I'm not going to talk about um, the work that we currently do or what we have done. I'm just going to try and talk about 
where I think we might try to get to, um, and most importantly, how um, we, we, we build staff in, into this group um, and want people to be part of it. So, um, I know we get the aims and people sort of go, mm. um, for me, I, I, I don't see why we can't be, have a leading profile in sport and human performance here. We have one of the largest um, sport and exercise science uh, staff group, uh, large, large student cohort and MSc. Um, we have large coaching and um, physical education teams so, and sports studies um, all in that subject group. So for me, I, I, don't, I don't see why we can't establish our research areas um, to be competing and to be really well known um, for our research in these areas and the themes that we're trying to take is a real sort of applied research approach so that we can continue to utilize that research to generate applied practice professional practice um, as well as take that back into the education take it back into our students and continue um, with that side of things um, so again, I suppose that overall we will be looking to try to grow research projects that do develop um, streams for income generation as well, like, like the other groups. Um, hopefully, as we generate a reputation and we build that profile, then that is something um, that, that will come. Um, REF is with us. Um, we're already probably sorted there in terms of what we've got for this time, but it's really important that we try to push um, for the next one. I think there'll be another one. Um, <laughs> John's probably thinking, oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> but there'll be another one. Um, and, and again, uh, tying that back into the student experience and, in, and enriching that through both our research and knowledge transfer um, activities. So, um, almost forgot. Um, we're trying to establish our research around three sort of key themes. Um, so I have been meeting with the organisation team at the moment, which has been myself, Keith Davids, uh, Tim Vernon and Dave Morley. Um, so we, we're looking at our themes um, around sort of performing developing um, and well-being within and across sort of sport and human performance. So I'm not saying we don't have a lot of things that we need to be doing, there's a lot of work to do. So on the academy side of things, you know, we've got to try and establish those connections, um, whether it, you know, student projects, the internship programme, um, which Dave Hembra is already um, well well embedded in has been leading for ages we need to sort of um continue to develop that type of work um, and then obviously on the on the research side you know we need to try and develop those collaborations with the awrc national center the work that's going on in the psychology um research center i get i keep getting the initials wrong so i'll apologize if anyone's here from psychology <laughs> Sepsac or something. Um, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> behaviour change anyway. Um, so, but collaborating with external partners, um, you know, inter international collaboration. So, um, you know, when I first got here, we had a, a very large sort of PhD contingent and, and GTAs. The environment was buzzing. Um, and I know that uh, Jeff and the team and Amanda are really working hard to get that environment back for us um, and, and I think we need to be, this group needs to be um, part of that of course. <laughs> so um, so just, just very quickly then around our performing, developing um, and well-being, um, what we tried to do initially when I was chatting with Tim and, and Dave um, and, and Keith, um, just trying to think about Okay, some of this stuff we're already doing, some of it is the things that we need to be doing, um, but we try to look at um, key, key areas of research that will start to um, look at basically sports science performance and how that influences, uh, how sports science influences performance. Um, so that could be consultancy delivery or it could be um, research as well, but hopefully the research informing um, the practice. 
Um, they're not set in stone, they're just ideas. Um, we we'll want to theme it up because it'll help us consolidate and just bring things together. Um, we've got great research going on all over the place, we've got good consultancy going on. We just need to bring it um, to we just need to bring it to one place. Um, so developing obviously is sort of around the uh, talent development, the youth work, um, you know, human development, positive youth development through sport or as a vehicle. Um, skill expertise and coaching science, um, obviously influencing sport participation, schools and physical education. So if we can think about the skill set that we have across our academy for multidisciplinary opportunities in these areas, um, we think that that's probably a niche that we can, we can offer um, or certainly become experts at developing that reputation within that. Um, well-being of course is a big part so this is maybe where we start to join sport and health together in those areas of research performance lifestyle areas um, models of health and performance you know what's what's our model for working with children and youth in sport from a multidisciplinary perspective so these are just ideas that, that we've been talking about in the organization team um, initially so uh, so just sort of what next really, we, we've been meeting as a, as a small team, you know, there's only one or two full-time members of the old CSES um, that kind of exist in this at the moment, so it's just going to, it just needs to grow and we want people to come and be part of it. So um, what's next for us, and there will be a date on this, but we're just trying to work around um, the hot spots in the semester and... Um, we're going to let things settle down for people, knowing that induction time is, is just a little bit busy. But we are going to hold sort of a, um, a collaborative workshop, a half day event. And we just want people to come talk about new ideas, talk about their research, things that they've got going on currently, um, current projects, where they might come and be part of, of the research group. Um, so as it stands just in the, the small organisation team at the moment, um, Professor Keith Davids, you know, we've, we've got real sort of research development um, and expertise sort of as part of a, of a sub-lead in this group. Um, we've got Tim Vernon, um, who uh, really was um, taking lead on the delivery side of a podium performance, as it was called back then within CSES. So Tim's going to continue to coordinate work and lead in that area. Um, and now we have um, Dr. Joe Stone as well, who is our subject group research coordinator, um, to bring us together really with the Academy for Coaching, PE um, and Sports Science. Um, and then myself, um, leading that but obviously fitting in and around all those little areas too so um, I don't see that many from the academy here today as in the old academy um, so um, but hopefully word will get out and we can start to grow and I think this could be an exciting uh, research group for us. Afternoon everyone. Hi. Simon Shipley, head of the Sport Industry Research Centre. Um, cheesy title, The Work of Cirque. <laughs> so in the next 10 minutes, I'll give you a flavour of what we do. I did something similar on the away day, so I want to kind of give it a different angle, really. And it starts with the people. And this is the latest version of the Cirque organogram updated for Jane Wilson retiring and um, members of the leadership team taking on her um, staff. So we're a head count of 17, including our administrator, Rebecca. And um, I want to talk about our leadership team and the skills that we have. So I am, for my <coughs> sins, an accountant. And as you'll see shortly, everything that we do is in one way or another related to the economics of sport, the finance of sport, or other management disciplines that are applicable to sport. And backing me up, we've got Themis here, who is um, 
an econometrician and statistician with a set of skills that you just not find anywhere else in our field, either nationally or internationally. He's been with us 25 years now. I've got to find a way of letting him out his extra five days holiday. Uh, Girish, who's in the room, is a trained economist and statistician and um, general all-rounder. Does a lot of work in our events. Larissa Davies, PhD graduate from this institution. Um, economist, leads on social value, social return on investment, which we think will be the next big thing, or it is the next big thing. And then last but not least, Richard Coleman can't be with us today because he's up at Glen Eagles leading a team in the field evaluating the Solheim Cup. And we're ably supported by this team of people here, most of whom are either former students of mine and or graduates of this institution, many of which are first class graduates. Uh, we're not very well represented in the room today because we've got a team out of the Solheim Cup and we've also got teams doing um, school games, mark visits and other field work. It's a very busy time of year for us so as we come out of summer into autumn. So what do we do? Uh, so these are our seven strands of business. Um, the economics of sport, probably best demonstrated by the sports satellite account, which quantifies the value of sport to the economy, not just in the UK, but increasingly now in Japan, the Netherlands, Austria, and Poland. Sports participation, and I use the word sport as a shorthand for sport and physical activity, because physical activity is very much where it is at at the moment, particularly given the um, sporting future and Sport England response to that towards the sporting towards an active nation. We're renowned for our work on major events and festivals, and uh, for those of you who were at the uh, away day um, <coughs> earlier, you would have seen that we had just won the right to evaluate the World Netball Championship, the Solheim Cup, and um, the UCI Road World Cycling Championships, which takes place at the end of this month. We also do research, and this is a kind of personal thing, but one of the papers that I'm most proud of is a piece of work I did with Chris Graham in 2000, which to date has something like 254 citations from a journal called Managing Leisure. And in elite sport policy, I'm part of an international consortium of about 15 nations that take part in this so-called SPLIS project, SPLIS being sports policy factors <laughs> leading, leading to international sporting success. Trips off the tongue. <laughs> People say to me, why, why is the F silent? Why don't you uh, have factors in the spliffs? And it would be an anagram of spliffs, which in the context of elite sport wouldn't be the best acronym. Um, and there's a paper from there that we did in 2006 that has over 360 um, citations. We've done most of the work in the UK on volunteering and continue to do so, particularly with individual development being one of the five outcome areas of the government strategy for sport. We do performance management and that works on two levels. One, we provide the national benchmarking service for Sport England, looking at the efficiency, utilisation, customer satisfaction of publicly funded sport leisure facilities, but also a lot of our work is on evaluations which is a form of performance management in the sense to which, to what extent has an intervention achieved its objectives. I'm not, not taking a call. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, we do social impact, social value, social return on investment, which has become really important since Sporting Future was published <coughs> in 2015. And if there's a message that comes out of all of that, it's about doing work which is policy relevant and I mean that in the sense that we are roughly a million pound a year turnover business, of which 80,000 is contributed from the last breath, and therefore 920,000 has to be found from other sources. So therefore we're kind of on a remorseless treadmill, if you like, of doing things that the outside world values and is prepared to pay for. It's not remorseless treadmill, it's actually great fun. 
but sometimes it feels like it. Um, and then there's an example of how this works. Um, this weekend, at very short notice, we put a team in the field to do surveying and early horse trials. Yeah, people went to the weekend, there's a Solheim Cup going on, but a couple of people who were prepared to run through brick walls for us said, yeah, we'll do it, and went down, surveyed on the four days of the event, and uh, did a pretty successful job. And this is where it becomes fun. Um, we were working in Royal Port Rush in Northern Ireland in the middle of July. And um, we had a fantastic week there. And we were coming back on the ferry. And in the ferry terminal, there was a cafe and news agent. So we went to get a brew. We just happened to catch this copy of the Daily Mirror. Um, and this was the headline. Cafe is Lowry, Shane Lowry from I, Republic of Ireland, who won the Open, and here was 80 million boost for the economy, and here was a mention of that estimate being from the Sport Industry Research Centre. So we've got students working with us, and you couldn't believe that they were front page news. But it's not a fluke. Um, this is Robbie and Lee, who have both been in Hong Kong this last week as teaching assistants, both first class graduates in this institution working at the Ryder Cup with a lad called Sam Barker Sabido, absolute mine of golf information. This guy must be on the spectrum somewhere. His knowledge of golf is just unbelievable. And a great lad to have in the field. He worked at the, at, um, the um, Ryder Cup and also worked at um, the Open. I spent four or five days with an absolutely fantastic bloke. Um, and all of them, you know, prepared to put themselves on the line to go out and do this data collection. Last but not least, this is a guy called Alex Headley. This was the Open at Royal Birkdale. He was dutifully going about his business, um, interviewing people, when he was approached by the BBC. And this picture was on the BBC website, and um, this is the, the text from it. Here we have it. University student Alex Headley has an unusual job at the Open. We do a lot of different events, Alex says. We did the Royal Regatta at Henley and we're doing the Special Olympics in Sheffield next month. So a great experience for these guys. And like all the other heads of group have said, um, the opportunities for students are many. Uh, we offer them the opportunity to work with us as casuals, to do level five placements with us, to do the dissertations with us, I've got four postgraduate students whose dissertations need marking. Uh, we're advertising today for a graduate intern to come and work with us and get paid 17,500 or something for a year's work and hopefully work themselves into a um, permanent job. We've got loads of material for guest lectures and so on. And so really, I'm standing here extending the hand of friendship and saying, um, how can we collaborate? I'm just going to go back actually. Maybe I'm getting the call. <laughs> Turn that off. Oh, I've lost my task. Give to a sport engineer. I want to go back and just say um, this is how I position our work. This is like a cube of funded, not funded, not impactful, impactful, fundable, and non fundable. Funded, other people prepared to pay for it. Fundable, it's at least two star three star or above in the ref, and impact what it makes a difference. And that's where we are. And I make no apology whatsoever for being elitist like that and having those sorts of aspirations. So in extending the hand of friendship, I just say, you know, how can we collaborate?